Patterns are the basic element of any track in machine, so it's really helpful to understand how to edit those patterns. Now in this video, I'm going to go over a few ways to work with patterns. Um, first I'll start with the software and then I'll move on to the hardware. In the software, most of your editing will happen down in this area here. You can see that there's a list of all your sounds as well as notes, and these notes correspond horizontally to the sound. So these are all my kicks, these are all my snares, and so on. Um, you have different scroll bars down here. To zoom, I like to grab the edge of the scroll bar and then just move it in or out, and that way you can have full control over the viewing area. There's also three different tools down here. First of all, there's the pointer tool. So this tool, you can click on any note, just move it around by dragging it. Um, you can also change the start and the end point. So to do that, make sure your cursor icon changes, then just drag the start point or the end point or anything you want. Now to delete notes, you can right click on them. To add them back in, just double click and they will add in at the nearest point on the grid. Um, if you're going to put a lot of different notes in at once, it's helpful to use the paintbrush tool. Now this will let you press in a note just by clicking once or you can click and drag and it'll add notes as long as you drag it, so I'll show you that just like that. And this is also helpful for changing velocities all at once, so just click and drag. The velocities will change to wherever your mouse is. If you want to erase all those notes, you can do that easily by using the eraser tool. Just click drag and as you'd expect, the notes are erased. Now there's one trick I want to show you with the pointer tool. Say I want to copy the first half to the second half and I don't want to manually input all these notes in again. I can just select all of these and now while holding the alt key on my keyboard I'm going to click and drag and it's going to duplicate whatever I had selected and I can drag it to any other point in the in the uh, pattern. You can also do that for a hi-hat so if you wanted to duplicate this onto another sound you could alt click and drag and move these to another hi-hat so you can layer stuff that way. So that's just a little handy trick for working in the software. Now I want to also show you keyboard mode, and I've talked about this a little bit before. It's also helpful to understand how you can work with it and edit different patterns. So for every sound, you can have a keyboard mode. So if I'm going to select my kick, then enter keyboard mode just by clicking here, this is going to be keyboard mode um, specifically designated for the kick. So these are just different kicks here. And now you can see that these line up with this highlighted note right here. And this is the root key of whatever sample you have loaded into your sound. So what that means is it's going to play exactly how you have it recorded. So this is going to be my regular kick. Now if I want different pitches of that kick, I can use these different notes here. So this is kind of useful for samples like a kick and a snare or anything like that, but more so for melodic instruments. So I'm going to head to my bass here, and you can see when I'm not in keyboard mode, it just looks like my bass line is just one note. But as soon as I enter into keyboard mode here, scroll down, you can see that my bass line is comprised of all these different pitched notes. So this is where you'll find the chromatic keyboard. It's very useful for things like basses, um, keyboards, anything that's melodic in nature. So I think that about covers it for the software. Now I'm going to move to the hardware and show a few different things. So first of all, I want to cover adding and deleting notes. Now in the previous video, I talked about how you can record just by um, playing the pads while the pattern is playing in the background, making sure that you have record enabled. I'm going to follow along with that this time, but also introduce something called Note Repeat. And this is found right on this button here. Um, now first of all, I want you to show you how to latch it. So instead of having to hold it down, you can just hold it down once and press the control button up here. And that's going to make sure that this button will stay lit. And then to turn it off, just press it again. Now that works for any of these buttons down here. So if I want to highlight this button, for instance, hold it down, press control, that's going to stay latched. So that is very useful. So anyways, back to note repeat, I'm going to enter it here, and you'll see that there's a few different tabs up here. Now each of these tabs will remember which settings you have, and you have three different settings here. You have gate, um, rate, and type. I usually leave gate on uh, at 100%, but I also change the rate quite a bit. Now this is what it sounds like, so it's going to change how fast the notes are repeating. So you can hear how that works there. So like I said, these tabs will remember your rates. So you want to set this at the three most common ones you'll be using in your track. Now that's almost often going to be just 1 8th, um, 1 16th, and then maybe like 1 32nd or something like that. Um, so I'll leave it like this for now. And this is also nice because it is velocity sensitive. So if I press this quietly, 
the notes will repeat at the velocity that you're holding down the pad, so that's very nice there. So I'm going to do a count in and record these hi-hats um, using the, the note repeat function. So let me delete these really fast so I can start over. I'm just going to do a count in um, and then switch between these using the tabs and you'll see how easy it is to sequence in these repeated phrases. So that's very useful for something like hi-hats or maybe snare rolls or something like that. You don't have to play it in exactly on time. Now you might be asking how you can erase notes. Well that you can do using this erase button here. So how this works is if you hold this down and then press any pad here, the note will be erased at the same time the track is playing back. So you want to press this exactly once you want to erase that note. So I'll just show you that. I'm going to use the hi-hats here and if, whenever I press this down it's going to erase the note at that same time. So that way you can selectively delete your notes. Now you might be wondering how you can erase all the notes as well, and that's a very reasonable request. Um, to do that, there's two different ways. First of all, I will show you the way using the select button here. So I'm going to enter this, uh, make sure I go onto the events tab here, and these highlighted pads are the sounds that are actually making up my pattern. So you can see in the software I only have notes that are um, selected on these four different sounds here. So I'm going to select all my hi-hats and you'll see that it selects all of them over here. If you want to select additional sounds, just um, click the pads and you'll see them highlight. For now I'm just going to work with my hi-hats. So once you have these selected, just press shift and then press pad 9 and those will be erased. And let me undo that just by pressing shift in the first pad. I'll show you another way to do that. So I'm going to exit here and uh, I'm going to deselect these notes just in the software. Um, and you can also erase all the notes by entering keyboard mode. So I'm going to make sure I'm on my hi-hat here. I'm going to go into keyboard mode. And now when I press shift and pad 9, it's going to only erase the notes that you're in keyboard mode for. So if I exit keyboard mode, you'll see that my kick and snare and my um, shaker are still sequenced in. And my hi-hat that I was, had selected before is now erased. So in that way you can delete all the notes that are corresponding to a specific sound. Now let me undo that again, I'll go back to where I have them all, and um, now I want to show you a couple different things with the pattern duplicate feature. Um, so basically I always duplicate a pattern before I edit it, so if I record something live I'll duplicate that pattern so when I edit it I make sure I have a copy of the original. And it's very easy to do that, just hold this pattern button here, you'll see that I'm on the first pattern here press the duplicate button, press the pattern that you want to duplicate, and then press an empty slot to duplicate that pattern to there. So now I have pattern 2, which is an exact copy of my first pattern, and I'm going to edit this one here. So I'll just go to hi-hats, keyboard mode, clear, exit keyboard mode, and now I have... I can switch between this new pattern, and my first one, and make sure I didn't lose any of my hard work. Another nice feature with the patterns is an easy way to double the length. So instead of manually changing the length and then copying everything over with the cursor, you can just press the pattern button, make sure you're on the pattern that you want to double, and then press F1. Now that's just simply going to double the length and then copy all the notes over to the second half of it. So it's exactly the same pattern, just twice as long. Now you can edit the hi-hats or something like that and add some variety to the pattern. If at any time you don't like one of your patterns, just press the pattern button, select the one that you want to delete, and then press delete up here, and then it'll be gone, and you can use the empty slot to make another pattern. So, between the hardware and the software, there are several different ways to edit patterns. Make sure to get familiar with these methods, because this is a way that you build a strong foundation for your track. Once you are comfortable with this, we are ready to move on.